And so as far as um, working with different people, uh, you have mentioned Chris Gervais and a couple of others. You know, how did you get involved with them or, you know, when do you find that you need to bring other people in that maybe are directors, producers, etc.? Yeah, great question. So, um, so I moved here in 2006, 2007. I lived here as a kid for a while. I lived here in 2000 and moved away and I just, I really like, I like this area. And so I came back um, and I had taken about a, I guess about a 10 year hiatus from film. Um, was mainly just doing a lot of writing and drawing comic books and stuff. And uh, you know, the digital revolution happened in that time. From, from film, which was really expensive to digital medium. So I, when I got here, I didn't really, I just kept writing, but then um, my wife decided she was gonna go back to, acu go to acupuncture school, just out of the blue, right? And I started thinking about, wow, she wants to do something to change her life to do what she really wants to do. So I decided to start getting back into film. And when I did, what I, what I did was I reached out to the local film commission um, and asked them, you know, do you guys have any recommendations on how someone who's new to the area could get involved? They really didn't have anything. Like, here, call this person or that person. They never returned my calls. So mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, that thanks, but no thanks. Um, and then I, um, I reached out, I looked up, you know, just groups in the area. And there was a screenwriting group, uh, North Carolina screenwriters, that Lavender Gill uh, had pulled together. And Lavender, again, is a producer and director and writer. Uh, he's got his MFA, he taught at NCSA. Um, and we actually met up there for this group and he had a, a screenwriting group that him and one of his friends had pulled together, um, Will Hicks. And so I went to that group and I met Lavender and we hit it off. And from there we started, I started that relationship, right? And started, I mean, we really appreciated each other's um, um, knowledge of film history and you know, the inventory of films that the world put out there, right? Mm -hmm. And we really hit off in that regard and started kind of challenging each other to do more projects. Um, and and uh, Chris, um, I actually met through some of the local folks. So a, a guy named Rod Shepard and I um, shot, just decided we were gonna go shoot this uh, little thing for um, Amazon, the Amazon commercial contest they had a while back. And in doing that, he brought in a lot of people that he knew um, I love that. Uh, among them was uh, Teresa St. Germain, who was taking acting classes with a guy named Tim Holt. And Tim was is from England, and uh, I don't know, he was the guy in, in Artifacts, um, and has done a lot of work in the area. Really talented guy. Mm -hmm. And um, we hit it off. And so you start finding these little relationships, right? That Tim then knew Chris from working on um, Devil's Crossing, and introduced me to Chris. Chris did music for my first film locally called Lost Dog with Tim and Mari Shelton, which I think you guys had interviewed Mari in the Definitely. past. Yeah, she's great, fantastic, incredibly talented. And uh, you know, you just start building it snowballs, right? And I think if you know what you're doing and you're a friendly person and you care about people, um, and if you pay people, <laughs> that helps too, right? Yeah. I think you start kind of getting these relationships and establishing some legitimacy. Um, and through Tim, I've met a lot of other people. Um, ben Slicker, who's recently won the Light Factory, um, uh, he's done that twice now, uh, the Light Factory contest. Um, Nathan Besner, um, you know, um, just a, a whole bunch of people that are filmmakers. That you know, you start talking to these people, and you find that you you start collaborating. And it becomes this really fun kind of thing. I'd say, you know, Chris is, you know, like I said earlier, he's a Renaissance man, mm -hmm. right? He has. And he's introduced me to a lot of his friends like Micah and, and other people who yeah, are Micah's also great. equally talented and just fantastic. I'd say that Chris, though, just blows me away with what he's capable of doing. I mean, there's a little documentary he put on his blog spot that I still get hung up over about, um, about Steven Spielberg's Jaws and it, about where he's at in his life and how Jaws and these two little stars, shooting stars that appear in the film that Steven Spielberg didn't put there, they were just there, how that chance it's just kind of like the same chance that he's, you know, he wants to see happen for him with film. It's just, it was just, wow, I was like, wow, <laughs> that is amazing, you yeah. did that, you know. And so, yeah, just meeting different people, I think, um, for filmmakers who come to the area, it, you know, there's there's also some, some other film groups in the area. I think one of the challenges with film groups is a lot of times people try to jockey for, you know, position within mm -hmm. those groups and it becomes sort of this, look at me kind of thing instead of this collaboration and this, this want and need to help others. Right. And I think there's a lot of people in the groups that do that 
but I also think there's a lot of, of posturing that happens. And I, yeah. That was actually going to be um, kind of a follow up as, you know, you know, while I, I understand that pretty much any, any profession you go into in general, there's going to be a certain amount of, sure, yeah, I'll help you with this, but like, have you found that the, I guess, directing, acting, film community in general is more along the lines of, okay, we're all doing the same thing, so let's try and help who we can without hurting ourselves, or do you find that it's more like, no, I'm kind of trying to do this stuff, this is, your might invade in my, yeah. you know, demographic, or it might invade on what I want to do, so do you find that people are really willing to help, or do you just kind of find, like you were saying, where it's just... You find certain people that know other people that are willing to help. But. It's a mix. I mean, they're, I mean, really quickly when you first meet somebody, you know if they're in it because they love the medium mm -hmm. and they love film, and you know if they're in it because they want to be a star, right? Or because they want to be the best thing right. ever. And I think they're, I mean, you quickly weed through that and filter through that and find the people who are really invested and who, who want to hone their talent. And it's not just about, you know, look at me. You mm -hmm. know, it's about look at this, let's share this, let's talk about this, let's collaborate on this. And, you know, I, I, there's a lot of people I've worked with um, without, you know, necessarily naming names um, that I found one way or the other way. And, you know, clearly the people that I feel like I want to collaborate with, I keep collaborating with. I think the challenge is um, it's really difficult this industry is really difficult because you have to have a, a measure of bravado mm -hmm. in order to really make it, I think. But I think you can, I think you, there's a difference between confidence and arrogance, right? And posturing. And I think that, you know, me personally, there's been a couple of times where I've gone out of my way that people didn't have equipment and I wanted to give them the chance to shoot so they could use my equipment, right? And, and when I came here, I didn't have equipment. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was quoted by somebody about how this one person made a film for a hundred dollars and then you come to find out that all the equipment was some equipment that their friend had or this person had it's like that's money right you, you unless you have that friend I mean that's, right. that's worth something so I mean understanding that I mean I've, I've won the Arts and Science Council grant twice and the Arts and Science Council here uh, in Charlotte fantastic I mean amazing support structure great way to meet some folks I think as well through that conduit um, they're incredibly supportive of filmmakers, of, of artists in the area, and um, applying for that grant, a lot of people don't know about the grants, and they give out quite a few grants. I was going to say, so, I didn't even realize that there was that possibility. Yeah, I mean, Arts and Science Council, um, the ASC is, look up ASC Charlotte, and, mm -hmm. you know, if, you're, if you're up there uh, in, in North Carolina, in the Charlotte area, obviously, but um, they, they give out, you know, grants, you just make an application, you show them your work, you make a bid, not everybody gets it, but you know, clearly, but it's a great conduit to get money to buy equipment. That's what happened to me. Great. I mean, I got back into this because the Arts and Science Council grant, uh, folks said, okay, you're worth having some money. And I got to go buy my camera, and I was able to get an iMac at Final Cut, back when Final Cut was something I wanted to get. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so I think um, they're, they're, you, you get a mix, and I think the important thing to remember is we all put our pants on one leg at a time, right? right? And there's a there's a level of pragmatism that I think people have to bring to this industry as well that it's not just about picking up a camera and shooting it takes hard work mm -hmm. and it takes um, you know it, it, it takes respect for everybody else right you can't you can't use people yeah right? you cannot and it use seems people. to be quite a, a team type it is instead you know even though you do have a director who's got the plan and the vision and everything but it's a you know, just from how you're describing it, it's like they're, every single part of it is like you have to work as a team for the yes. better uh, betterment or the, you know, hope. The detriment of the project, one exactly. or the other, yeah. I mean, yeah, and that's a great point you make because I think um, I'm only as good as the team that is working with me, right? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the music, Chris Gervais, you know, we, we've already talked about him, he's amazing, right? Um, you look at the acting, the actors in, in some of my films, they're great. They're fantastic actors. Patrick Keenan, Mari Shelton, Tim Holt, you know, James Freetley, Ashley, um, Ashley Payne. Um, I'm sure there's some people I'm forgetting as well, but all these people that 
are really talented at what they do. They care about their craft. They invest in it by, I mean, I couldn't pay them much, right? but I want to pay them something because it's their face yeah. for eternity that's blazoned on that digital medium, right? And the crew, I mean, you've got your, your first AC, second AC, you've got your sound people, you've got your DP. I mean, these are all people that make that vision come together and it's a collaborative vision, right? As long as it's collaborative, I think it's going to be successful. I mean, you have to know the director just guides, right? Yeah. And then it evolves and it arrives. So that's how I, that's how I feel about it anyway. <laughs> Sounds great. You have mentioned a piece that you've already done, Artifacts. Um, mm. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Like, kind of, what's that about? Sure, sure. What's the history? So, um, so Artifacts is a short film that, uh, that I shot in uh, 2010 and have been editing and re-editing over time because I think after you do a film once you kind of take some step away from it and you start learning ah, I could do that <laughs> right you're not invested in it to the extent that you're gonna make dumb decisions so artifacts um, is about a uh, womanizing photographer who, who basically ends up um, it's, a, it's an Oedip Oedipus story right mm -hmm. um, based on the classic Oedipus story and it's this guy who's so so myopic you know so focused on um, his, his success and women and you know devouring you know anything he can this very hedonistic lifestyle that he ends up um, sleeping with his daughter right so uh, not knowing it's his daughter of course but that's the tragedy of the situation and the whole the whole concept was built around my feeling that a lot of times people walk through their lives um, with blinders on to everyone else you know like if I see you sitting on a bus I could sit down next to you and you could be in a bad mood and, and in a rush because somebody is in the hospital or you're late for your first day of your job and just everything's gone wrong and I may get pissed off at you because you step on my foot, right? But people don't take account and, and try to take the moment to figure out, oh, okay, that person's maybe going through something or to help them out. So this film was a way of exploring this very sort of focused tunnel vision that people have in our society today. The film's in black and white because um, it's really about perspective. The whole mm -hmm. film's about perspective. If you look at the film from the beginning to the end, you see, you follow this guy in a specific story, and if you look at from the back to the front, it's a completely different story, right? It's how could he do that? How could he sleep with his daughter? And then you see, oh, this is why. If you follow him in his path, you're kind of surprised by that, right? So that's why it's black and white. It's, it's about truth it's about perspective there's a lot of mirrors there's a lot of purposeful framing of uh, in, the, in the film um, and it's about photography right and what's the truth of the medium mm -hmm. you know the medium lies it's black and white it lies there's a there's a line in which Patrick Keenan asked Tim Holt um, you know why you, know, you can't tell the difference between a brown tie and a black tie and that is a hint that is a purposeful line that I kept in the film because it's about you can't tell if it's brown or black as the audience so what I'm telling you is that get ready this may be a lie everything you're seeing here might be a lie right and that's that's what it ends up being is a lie to, for him um, a ruse so the film is called artifacts because um, I feel and we've talked about this a little earlier that we are the sum total of every all of our choices and decisions we make in life and just like um, just like a mountain range is it's sort of uh, eroded over time and shaped by its elements so are we shaped by our elements you know um, every wrinkle line every you know joyful experience every memory we have that comes out in who we are today so I think um, I think really it's called artifacts because it's about the fact that all these things make this person who he is all these memories and it's about memory too right perspective in term of memory so yeah wow that sounds really interesting yeah <laughs> for anyone who hasn't seen it check it out You look a lot like him when she was young.